Hey everyone, Janessa Storley here with What's Happening in Williston. I am so excited, you guys, because today we are doing our very first community spotlight. I really wanted to do some Williston community spotlights to highlight organizations, small business owners, um, and nonprofits here within the area to kind of let you guys know some behind the scenes, different ways for you guys all to get involved, um, and then also just really keep you up to date with our wonderful community here in Williston. And so to kick off this series, I am here with Dina Novak, the president of the James Memorial um, Art Center here in Williston. Dina, thank you so much for being here first. I'm so excited. Thanks for having us. Awesome. And so the James Memorial, for anybody that doesn't know, what is the historical significance of the James here? The James was built in 1911 as Williston's first library, um, and that is the portion we're sitting in today. Of course, everybody knows Gallery 2 was added on a little bit later in the 50s, but the building was built in 1911 to fill the purpose as Williston's first library. Um, after it had served its purpose, it sat uh, vacant. It was used by wrestling club, karate club. Um, I actually attended junior high art classes here, and I would walk across the street every day from the junior high. Um, it sat dormant for a long time, and in 1993, the city was uh, contemplating tearing it down, and a group of concerned citizens stepped forward and offered to become the custodians and caretakers of the facility if they could turn it into a visual arts center. And so we always have to make sure we um, pay tribute to our wonderful forefathers who took the time to take care of this place and get it to where we are today. Awesome. And over the years, like you were mentioning, there's all of these different galleries. So can you kind of walk us through the layout? Because right now we're in Gallery 1, which is the original structure, the original building that was built. Um, then there's Gallery 2, which features more of the kitchen. Yep, yep, so we have um, Gallery 1 is our main space, that's what we call the big area here, and that will always be the main shows and the touring exhibits that are displayed in here. In Gallery 2, we use it as overflow for those larger exhibits, or we sometimes have separate exhibits in there, which is a lot of fun to be able to have um, two different things going on. Downstairs, we also have center stage, where um, there is the nice little stage. We also have some pieces from our permanent collection down there. We try to change those up quarterly, because we just thought it was nice to be able to share some of that wonderful permanent collection that the James Does store as well, and have some of that out on display. And then we also have the classroom facility, where we host all of our classes. Um, and workshops and all of the rooms are also always available to rent to the public. We have birthday parties, uh, baby showers, weddings, all sorts of things. You can find all that information on our website. I have like a lot of the different groups in town, the Williston Area Visual Artists meet here, the Dakota Prairie Quilt Guild meets here. Um, so we're always open to all of our community partnerships. We love having different entities come in and use the building because that's what we would love to see is just more use of the building. Awesome, yeah, because it is such a um, historical hub here. I mean, I, I'm a huge history buff, so I love learning about how it was founded and all of the women that came together to build the first library in Wilson. So I always find that information extremely fascinating. Um, and it is such a treasure. Like we live in a society to where building old historical buildings are torn down. Um, and yeah, it can kind of carry away some of that significance in our community. So I love that you guys are preserving it and keeping it up. And so what would you say is kind of like the mission and the overall heart of the James Memorial. Well, our founding fathers did a wonderful job, and I should say founding fathers and mothers, because of course we had a group, a mixed group. Um, the mission that they established when they founded the James Memorial Preservation Society was to uh, preserve history and promote art. They kept it very simple. We've also added the enhancing community because we thought that that was something very important that we do. Um, so first and foremost, to take care of the building is a big part of what we do. So we are the caretakers of the facility and that in entails all the financial part of it as well. So we have to do fundraising, grant writing, all of those kinds of things to be able to continue the rehabilitation and upkeep of the facility. And then the promoting the artwork within the community, we do that by having, like you said, the switch out monthly exhibits in here, and those are brought to us by the North Dakota Art Gallery Association with help from the North Dakota Council on the Arts. Um, we also offer the classes to um, share the arts with the community. We 
focus a lot on the students, but we also have adult things as well throughout the, the year. Um, providing a place for kids to come and learn about art is very important because the schools uh, have limited art classes when they're in the elementary, and then of course they can get that art when they get older, but we want a place to offer them somewhere to get started and find their love of art or cultivate that love of art. Um, and then we also try to do the arts-based fundraisers, arts-based community events. We have a really nice uh, mix of events that are free and open to the public in the community, and then also our ticketed events that all the funds from those then come back to support the operation of the facility. Awesome, sounds great. And that kind of just can segues us into if um, people would like to get involved with the James Memorial, uh, what do they need to do? What are kind of some of the things that you guys have going on? The best way I can tell you to keep up to date is follow our social media because we are very consistent and constant on posting on social media. And then our website is absolutely amazing. And you can find information on renting the facility. You can find information on all of our art classes, the art exhibits that are currently up. And the best part is if you become a member, you don't have to search it out. We make sure you're aware. So if you become a member at the James, you get a monthly postcard in the mail telling you what the exhibit is, when the reception will be. You also get email newsletters of all of our important events. Um, you get uh, you can if sometimes we do ticketed events and you might get a pre-sale so you can hop on there um, so the membership is extremely important because then you kept up to date with everything and you don't have to go search it out all right awesome and with that membership what are some of the price ranges if, if like a family wanted to become a member or an individual we try to keep it extremely affordable we have so many different tiers that you're going to be able to find a level that will suit what you family can afford. It is a yearly membership so you just pay it once and then we'll remind you when it becomes due um, and that is really a big part of how we operate on a consistent basis. So becoming a member you're directly supporting the operation of the facility and you're getting all these fun things. We also offer uh, little discounts on our classes if you're a member so that's always nice. You get that five bucks off of taking your class or sometimes we offer a uh, discount on events and things like that. Um, like the lowest membership starts at $25. It's, it's pretty affordable and a great way to support the arts in the community. Yeah, and then also getting some added benefits back to you as well. And currently, right now, you guys have a anonymous donor that is matching um, any new memberships that come in, is that correct? Yes, that is so exciting. So we have a wonderful, generous, anonymous donor who stepped forward and said that they would like to see more people become members of the James, and they thought that that might be a great way for them to give us a little extra incentive and also give people a little extra incentive at the beginning of the year to be, purchase that membership. So for every new membership, does not matter what tier you join at, we get an extra $100 donation from our donor and if you are renewing a current membership, we get an extra $50 donation from this wonderful, generous donor. So um, now is a wonderful time to do that. It's also great to do it at the beginning of the year because then it's easier for you to remember every year when you want to repay. Um, and now is a great time to do that and all of that is on the website and we've made it as easy as possible there's a big button right at the top of the website that says membership you just click on that it takes you right to the membership page and you can pick your tier and and how you want to pay for it and all that awesome so what can people be on the lookout for in terms of events um, classes all of those things um, in 2023 2023 is looking to be a, a a banner year. We're super excited. We have so many new things planned. We have so many of our things that people love that will be coming back. Um, we have one thing I want to mention is soups on. Um, we have that coming up in February. I love those events so much. And every, that's like a favorite event. And we, we used to do it every year, but we've kind of taken a step back and we kind of just do it every couple of years. So you can come have an amazing lunch of homemade soup, a dinner roll, and a dessert and a bottle of water for a suggested donation of 12 bucks. You can get it to go or you can come in and eat. And that will be um, in February, later on in February. So we have that coming up. That's always a favorite event because everybody loves soup. Um, we will be doing the charity auction again this year and I believe the last time we did that was in 2015. We have 10 original library chairs that were used in the facility. They're the ones from the 50s. 
um, and we will have local artists decorate and create something new with those chairs and they'll be up for silent auction that's going to be in March so then you could even own a little piece of the history of the James with an amazing artful spin to it um, and these are the last 10 chairs so we won't be doing this again so that's big um, of course art fest this year in September which is our arts in the park event and we'll be holding that down at Recreation Park that's always a huge hit um, we are hoping to do another princess tea party because the kids love that we have so many fun events and we have a year full of amazing art exhibitions I got to choose some of the art exhibitions that will be shown this year and they are um, top tier, super quality, amazing artists from all over the state, um, and also some Montana artists, um, and our local artists, which we love to support, and we have some fun uh, community shows coming up, and any artist of any level, of any standing, any medium can enter those, we try to do those quarterly. The next one is our um, April show, which is manga and anime focused oh so we have a lot of younger um, people that are super excited to submit for that one awesome great and then not to mention all of those wonderful large events going on you also have some great classes uh, clay camp I've seen <laughs> yep. um, I know that you'll do other different kind of classes for kids and then adults as well I know a painting switch is coming up for Valentine's Day I think I've seen like a newlywed game that's sold out it's sold out yep. oh, congratulations so yep. a lot of fun activities big and small and I just think that you guys are doing a wonderful job getting your guys' name out there um, and really showcasing what the James Memorial is and how you really support this community. I don't know honestly where I would be at in terms of understanding of the arts had it not been for the James Memorial. So I appreciate all of the incredible work that you have done. So where can people find you? Well, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at The James Memorial. Um, you, you can also find us on the web, and that is our biggest presence and the best way to find out about all of our events, and that is thejamesmemorial.org. And you can pay for classes, uh, you can enroll for them, you can buy tickets for events, find out what exhibit is on the walls, um, find out our hours, all of those things on there. And it's really easy to use, it works really well on the phone, which is great, and it's always up to date. Okay, awesome. And then typically what are your hours throughout the day? Monday through Thursday, 9 to 3, Friday noon to 5, and then we are open on Sundays, um, April through September, and that is uh, from 1 to 5, and we have some wonderful National Honor Society students from Williston High School that come and hang out in docent so that you're able to come in and view the exhibit. I cannot express how wonderful Sundays are to come in and see the artwork. If it were up to me, I would say Sunday is the best day to come see the artwork because it's nice and quiet. You can do your normal Sunday stuff, head over here at 1, and have a nice quiet look at the art, and it's a really great day to come visit. Awesome. Well, Dina, I really, really appreciate your time with us. It was so great learning not only about the history, but the mission of the James Memorial Preservation. And I'm so glad that we were able to do this interview. Um, and I just cannot wait to see what happens with the James Memorial in 2023. It sounds like a very amazing and jam-packed full year. And I just love all of your guys' events that you guys do here. You guys are such a great um, group of board of directors. So um, congratulations to that and thank you again for your time. Thanks for having us.